Welcome to the Council of Women. I'm Debbie Frazier. We're so glad you've joined us for the second program in our new series for women. As I mentioned in our first program, each week we're going to focus on one of three important areas of life, spirit, mind, and body. And last week, Pastor Ann Hansen talked about our spirits. Today, I am so happy to introduce to you Dr. Trillian Small. She'll be encouraging us and teaching us in the area of our minds. Welcome, Trillian. Thank you so much, Debbie, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Well, Trillian is a PhD in clinical counseling, and she is a licensed marriage and family therapist, and she's also an adjunct professor at the University of Texas. And if all that doesn't keep her busy enough, she is a consultant for athletes and performers where she provides like mental training from the locker room to the boardroom. So Trillian, I don't know how you're juggling all of those balls. How do you keep them on the air without getting too stressed? Yeah, well, some of those balls do get dropped from time to time, as you can imagine. But what I've really just learned is, hey, I have to really categorize my days. So certain days, I'm a mental health counselor. The other days, I'm a mental performance coach. And the other days, I'm an adjunct professor and whatever else I have to do. Otherwise, I feel very scattered. So I really just found if I can just segment my days based on what hat I need to wear, I'm able to balance it much more (laughs) than just being all over the place. But it's very rewarding. I'm sure that it is. And, you know, a few years ago when I met you, several years ago now when I met you, um, I just felt um, so inspired by you then. And then to see what God has done all these years and how he has used your testimony, that's one of the reasons that we really wanted you to be part of the Council of Women is that you are real. You understand (laughs) people and you talk about your own struggles too. And have you always been this vulnerable um, with others? I would love to say yes, but the answer is no. It's funny because it wasn't until actually 2012 when I actually began the journey of what it means to actually be vulnerable. So I was actually in my very first doctoral class and we were in a group setting and the class was really just to teach us how to run groups. And we were, of course, supposed to be the participant, but also just the learner as well. And one of the students randomly just turned to me and said, Trillium, I don't like you because you're fake. Yeah, she told, she called me fake. Can you believe that? I know. So I looked at her and I said, well, why would you say something like that? And she was like, well, everyone else here in the class is showing up and they're, they're sharing their stories. They're sharing your, their heart, but you're not. And I literally had nothing else to say after that, because at the time I was so avoidant, I wasn't vulnerable and I was not willing to let anybody see anything besides my resume. And, but that began my journey of really learning trillion. People don't like in authenticity. People don't like fake people. And I didn't know I was being fake. I just was only presenting what I thought others wanted or actually needed to see. And it was in that moment, literally three years later, the teacher actually gave us a chance to turn to anybody we wanted to in the classroom and say anything we wanted. And three years later, I turned to her and said, thank you so much for calling me fake. Now, it did hurt me, obviously. I was like, you could have used some different words. You could have said you're not being vulnerable. But I don't, I don't think that would have, I don't think that would have shook, you know, shook me the way that it did. Yeah. I looked at her and I said, thank you for calling me fake. Because it was in you calling me fake that I had to turn to myself and say, but am I? Am I being fake? And the answer actually was yes. I was being fake and I was being inauthentic. So no, vulnerability is not easy for me. It's not my normal. Um, but on a day-to-day basis, I strive to try to be real and be vulnerable because I realized that's what people are attracted to. Yeah. Right. They're attracted to the real. But can I just maybe say that, um, you know, from outside looking in, because obviously I'm a few years older, uh, that it's kind of a conditioning going on with young people. Again, going back to, you know, the media, Facebook, all those things. But, you know, you can take that picture for a second. And it seems like you, it seems like it's expected for your age group to always appear as if you are 100% together, ignore what's going on truly inside. Yes, absolutely. And that's literally why for for the the past few months, I've just disconnected from social media because I started to have those thoughts again of you need to be perfect. You need to be further ahead. You need to be doing this. They're doing that. Why aren't you doing this? And you start to compare yourself. And it is in this society of of filters and one picture really defines your whole life. But really, once you take the picture smiling, you're now crying. People don't see that part. People only see what you show them. And it is in our in our society now and just the generation. It's hey, you got to be filter perfect. <laughs> and as you know, we are not. So that puts a lot of stress and pressure on us. 
And I know for me that my vulnerability has come over years of making mistakes and having them seen. I mean, sometimes it's just you're thrown into those circumstances and you have to get up in the, in the right. ring and, and keep moving. And so that's it. Um, what happens when people refuse to share their authenticity with others? What do you think? Uh, you end up blocking the ability for true relationships to be built. For example, the, the reason why they weren't drawn to me in the classroom was because I was presenting myself as somebody that I was not. And I was presenting myself as someone who is not touchable, right? No one mm -hmm. likes to be like, that's why Jesus was so relatable to so many because he could be touched by our affirmities and our pains. Like we, we can relate to him in that. And whenever we are not being fully authentic in who we are, we forfeit we forfeit who God has called us to be. I remember one time um, God told me, Trillian, the greatest gift you can give someone is your story wrapped up in a newspaper. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the sound of that. I was like, oh, that sounds like you're going to tell me to, to be vulnerable. <laughs> and it was. He says, the good news is when you tell people your story, you're showing them the brokenness. You're showing them the pain. And what you're saying is, but like, God brought me through it all. So that's the good news. And whenever you are not being authentic, you run the risk of not only receiving your own deliverance and healing, but you can also be blocking somebody else's healing and deliverance because your vulnerability could be what the next person needs to realize, oh, there is healing after this. There is hope after this. And that's a risk that I'm now not willing to take. And that in your um, authenticity, the relationships you built can also be authentic, where that may not be the case in another circumstance. I want to ask if you don't mind to pray for women who are watching that might really have resonated with your story so far. You're going to share in a few minutes, but also, you know, that we, that we want to build authentic relationships and that the Lord will really show us how to do that and to be more vulnerable, not afraid to make mistakes. Do you mind praying now? Yeah. Thank you, God, so much for your love for us. Sometimes it can be difficult for us to realize that you love us unconditionally. As imperfect as we are, God, you still call us your daughters and your sons. So I thank you for your love. I pray, Lord, for the women and the men who are watching this, God, that you will open their eyes and their hearts to see themselves as you see them. And I pray, Lord, that something that we share today will tug at their hearts so much so that it gives them the courage and the strength, God to turn to you and say, Lord, show me how to be real. Show me how to be who you called me to be. Show me my identity. So I thank you, Lord, for opening their ears, opening their hearts, and allowing them to be receptive and open to what we have to share. I thank you, Lord, for being with them right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. You know, um, Trillian, I kind of like to think of this program as an opportunity for us to be unplugged. And I was sitting here thinking how vulnerable I was. I didn't want to make a mistake today. So, you know, yeah. just kind of even being in this environment <laughs> and also, and I'm in the presence of a doctor today. So um, anyway, I appreciate you sharing this yeah. morning. You're so welcome. <laughs> today, you're going to be talking about the importance of having a surrendered mind. I'm interested in learning more on this topic, so I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Yeah, thank you so much, Debbie. It's such a pleasure, as I've said, to be here to really share this topic with you. So I would love to start with a story. I am a storyteller. Um, so going back to my doctoral program, one of my last uh, meetings I had with one of my doctoral directors, um, it was very simple. It was really just to have uh, provide feedback to her about my experience in the program. And she asked me one simple question. She said, Trillian, how has your experience been with us in the program? And I literally out of nowhere burst into tears. And I'm like, Trillian, what is wrong with you? Pull yourself together. That's what I'm thinking internally. And I tell her, you know, I actually came to the program originally thinking I'm not here to make friends. I'm just here for my degree and I'm going to be out of here. Right? That was the attitude I had, especially after being called fake. <laughs> it's like, I'm not here for friends anyway. So I try to justify um, the reasons for being disconnected. But deep down inside, I was actually so lonely and I longed for connection. And, you know, I longed for the simple, let's go grab Subway before class. That was like the only restaurant we had near the class or the, the campus was a Subway and they would go to Subway and I wouldn't. And, and so it was, it was so, it was so sad for me because I realized Trillian, you missed out on the ability to develop possible uh, long lasting friendships because of your fear. So as you can imagine, I was truly embarrassed, you know, in the office with her, 
But she looked at me and said something that completely threw me for a loop. And she said, Trillion, your tears have been a gift to me. She said, I have, she said, I've never felt close to you until this moment. She said, this is the closest I've felt to you in the three years you've been here. This is a gift to me. And I didn't know what that means. I'm like, how in the world? Because again, at this time, I didn't like vulnerability. And at this time, I thought, I thought tears were weakness. Like, no, you show them you're strong. You show them you're a superwoman. But when she said that, it, it really began to dawn on me that if you surrender that mask and if you surrender the thought that you have to be perfect, that's when I can truly begin to move through you um, to have more sustainable relationships. But now, okay, to be fair to myself, you know, I said, okay, it's not entirely my fault that I thought I had to be perfect, you know, because clearly we are human beings that are made up of social interactions with other people, parents, friends, teachers, and the community. And so I said, well, where did that come from? Where did the thought that I have to be perfect come from? And so many times, you know, Debbie, in, in our lives and our experiences as a child or as a, even a teenager, we have these experiences that ingrain certain thoughts in us that, that become our own inner voice. They weren't even our voice in the first place. They were somebody else's voice that directly or indirectly we, we, we took hold of and we, we took it as if it was our own. So now, you know, we have relationships um, with other people, in particular, my biological father. Uh, he, well, he wasn't always in my life. Um, and it wasn't really until the age of 22, so from four to 22, I had zero connection with my father. And, and I truly do believe that part of the reason why I felt I had to be perfect um, was because he wasn't present in my life. And, and it, was, it was because they, my parents, they got a divorce and they had strains in their relationship that really rendered uh, the divorce being credible. But somewhere along the way, you know, honestly, between the age of four and teenage years or somewhere in between, I really don't know where, I just began to internalize this thought that I need to be perfect. I need to be perfect. You need to present yourself as you're perfect. And, and not only that, I began to tell myself that I'm not wanted. Again, I truly do not know exactly when I began to think this, but I, I truly do believe it is because of the absence of my father initially. And it was also, I believe it was, it was the absence that it was his, his absence that I began to feel unwanted, even though my mom and my stepdad, right, they were the, the greatest support system for me. So it's like, Trillian, you have these amazing people in your life. Why is it so difficult for you just to realize, hey, your father wasn't there, but your parents, your, your, your mother and your, your stepfather were there. But honestly, you know, Debbie, I think there's something to say about areas that we film are still voids, right? There's still, even though we have this X, Y, and Z over here to the right, there's something to say about those voids that we feel we have in our life, as well as those missing pieces um, in our life. And so I actually didn't drop that, that negative thought of, I, I, I'm not wanted until I was 26. And I'll be honest, because since we're being real today, <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I still have to remind myself on a day-to-day -day basis, Trillion, you are indeed loved. You are wanted because, you know, I'm sure you all can relate. There's times where something will happen. Somebody will say something. Somebody will do something that triggers that old wound of, oh, maybe I'm not wanted. Maybe I'm not loved because based on their actions, they're showing me that I'm not loved. But I come to tell you, right, that's a lie, right? We know that's a lie. We know that's a lie. And so it wasn't until I was 26 when I was sitting in the park and I finally called my dad for the very first time and I didn't want to, but it was really one of those experiences where God was like, Hey, I'm not going to bring you your husband until you forgive your father. And I'm like, ah, that's like, you know, telling, uh, telling a child, I'm not going to give you ice cream until you eat your broccoli. So I'm like, okay, whatever, eat the broccoli. Um, but ultimately I did get to the point where I said, I'm going to forgive this man. Um, because if it's going to be what lifts the weight off my shoulder, and if it's going to be what gives me freedom from, from this eating, emotional bondage let's do it it may hurt but let's do it so I called I was in a park in Nashville and I called my dog my father for the very first time in 22 years because he had reached out to me on Facebook and gave me his number and I, I just began to weep as he told me Trillian I love you I've never stopped looking for you I have pictures of you on the wall of course they're all baby pictures because he doesn't have current pictures and it was literally like a weight lifted from my shoulder when he told me that and in this moment I realized you know the importance of surrendering the lies that people have told us, right? Whether they are given to us intentionally or not, 
um, we have so many lies that we believe. Some of them are, I'm not loved. I'm not good enough. I can't trust anyone. I'm not in control. I'm not significant. What are some of the lies you've been telling yourself? Just think through that. What are some of the lies you've been telling yourself? Now, I have had many and I, I continue to have others I struggle with, such as I have to be my own defender and protector. And, and one time the Lord told me, Trillium, this is your heart. It was a heart and it, was, it had blood coming out of it. And he said, you are gripping your heart for dear life. You're suffocating your heart. And he said, you did well to get your heart out of the cage that life put it in, but you are now suffocating to the point because you are afraid to let it go out. Now you can imagine if, if I've been hurt over and over and over again of failed relationships, of course, I'm going to grip my heart. But the Lord says, you're not your defender. You're not your protector. I am. But to justify myself, I said, Lord, no, no, no. You said that in order for us to, or you said it, it is our um, guard your hearts for it is the wellspring of life. So I'm just guarding my heart, Lord. And so of course my knowledge was in part clearly because he took me on a very beautiful and gracious journey of learning what it means to guard my heart. So in that, that chapter of Proverbs four, it does say guard your heart. But if you read the verses before, it tells you it's wisdom, peace and understanding and instruction that guard your heart. Not you, wisdom, peace and instruction that guards our heart. Otherwise, we become our little G God and say, my heart is safer in my hands than in your hands. And we know that's not the case, although it may feel like that. So I want to wrap up with this. There's a quote that says, the greatest battle we will have to fight is the one between our heart and our mind. And throughout my entire life, that has literally been the one fight that I have had to fight over and over and over again. And I've won some, of course, and I've lost many as well. But I am continuing daily, really, to, to learn what it means to surrender my mask and the thought I had to be perfect, surrender those scripts and those lies. One of my other favorite uh, quotes is, our greatest suffering sometimes comes from the lies that we tell ourselves. Just think about that. Sometimes our greatest suffering is not from what happened. Yes, that hurt. But sometimes the greatest suffering comes from what you tell yourself based on what happened. Well, he left me, so I must not be wanted. No, that's a lie. He, he left you. Yes, that was his decision. But that does not now mean that you're not wanted. And then finally, I learned it's important to surrender our heart. And that, I truly believe, um, ultimately gives us the freedom to surrender our mind. That's what I'm, I'm talking about here, surrendering your mind. Like, what does all those have to do with surrendering your mind? Well, everything, because it's in the mind that our thoughts, our emotions, and our desires to act, live. That's where all of that happens in our mind. So may the Lord, I pray, give you the strength and the courage to surrender it all, surrender your heart's desires, surrender your fears, surrender your, your, those negative scripts. I pray that the Lord allows you to surrender those to him um, with great courage and with great boldness. So God bless. Thank you so much. Trillian, you just um, shared so much. I've just, um, I took a lot of notes. I'll see how many I can get through. But yeah. you, know, you caused me to think about, um, you know, something that you said about how's your experience been? And I'm thinking, how's your experience been with God? And yeah. how is it now? Like for those that you, of you that are watching, um, Trillian questioned how was her experience with others? Um, but I want to ask you, how is your experience been with God? And then Trillian, has, the thing that comes to me yeah. too is then how do you want it to be? Mm -hmm. And I yeah. put together a list of how I would want it to be based upon some of the things that you shared. I want it to be honest. I want it to be reliant. I want it to be interactive. And I'm just, as you're watching, are these relationships that you already have with God or, or do you want them to be this way? Because as we've heard from Dr. Small, it is absolutely there for you, just as it was for her and for me and that vulnerability, you know, you just have to be vulnerable. But I also want it to be present. I want it, I want to find shelter there, deliverance. And then you said protection, you know, to be protected. Yes. So just when you, when you ask the question of, you know, how do you want your relationship with God to be? Really, honestly, when you look at your relationships with other people, sometimes they are 
um, they are symptoms of your relationship with the Lord. Not always, but at times. And so I had a really rough time um, for so long with men. You know, I really was attracted to dismissive men who were unavailable emotionally and, 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 and in their time. And I realized, wow, like I actually perceive God to be very distant and dismissive and performance based. Like, okay, Troy, you have to do good because the Lord is not going to be pleased with you otherwise. Yes, you know, he desires for us to do things um, in the proper manner, but he's also not beating me upside my head if I fail. <laughs> and it was so hard for me to at first realize like, Trillian, I love you before your mother and your father even got together, yeah. which means I, I can't get away from his love. And for so long, I didn't believe that. And so, you know, for, and as you said, it's, you know, do you want an, an honest, open relationship with the Lord? And, and do you actually perceive him to be a Lord and a God that actually loved you? and actually truly does want the best for you. Sometimes it's hard to believe that, especially if our earthly relationships um, were painful at times. Uh, then also, I think that I'll never look at broccoli the same. <laughs> I, um, I need to try, <laughs> try to always eat my broccoli. Now, yes. I say try, <laughs> because right. going back to my other page and growing up with high expectations, I have to know now that I may not always eat that broccoli, mm -hmm. but um, I need to try to do that. Um, right. <laughs> that was so funny when you told me that. I was like, oh, oh you like a kid throwing a temper tantrum, like, oh my gosh, how dare you ask me to forgive someone? It's like, and then you think about it in hindsight, like, well, he wants you to have freedom. Of course, he wants you to eat the broccoli first. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, but yeah. Also, um, you talked about, you know, how you were not vulnerable and all the things that had happened in your heart and life to kind of tighten that grip on your heart. And um, it made me think about, again, being vulnerable in this program, um, that the, as I grew up, the, expect the expectations were really high. Um, to meet certain goals at all times, just a very high expectation. And I think what helped me finally, believe it or not, was failure or two. Mm -hmm. um, when you realize through those failures, you can survive. There is life after a failure. There's a life after yeah. making a switch. And it tends to make you more vulnerable. And what it did to me, it helped me seek grace. Mm -hmm. And you only find that grace, that's complete grace, the relationship with Jesus Christ. So I thought those were really wonderful points. And in a minute, I'm going to ask you if you will pray for women who want to switch from, you know, their experience they have with God. Now, if it doesn't include those um, to an experience that does include all of those activities um, and, and then surrender your heart, help um, our, our women watching today to surrender their heart and then surrender their mind. You reminded me of Proverbs 4.23 above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows through it so we have like three minutes left in the program um would you kind of lead us um dr trillian if you have something you want to share first um but just lead in prayer so those watching men or women will uh, be open to that uh, moment of vulnerability and strengthen their relationship with the God who's already sitting there ready to join in. Yeah. Um, so one of the final things I'll say, and then I'll pray is, ask yourself, um, what am I afraid of? Right? When it comes to surrendering, sometimes surrendering feels uncomfortable, right? Because it's, it's an openness, right? This is like a position of surrender. Normally, if we're afraid, we have this position and posture of, um, loneliness and protection. Um, what are you afraid of? Like, what are you afraid of when it comes to doing this and saying, Lord, I surrender this. I surrender this fear and this emotion to you. What are you afraid of? And normally it's rooted in um, a fear that originated in childhood, right? Are you afraid of connection? Because it's, it's going to be very difficult uh, to surrender control if you felt out of control as a child. It's going to be very difficult to surrender your heart you felt your heart was um, taken advantage of because we feel like we have to grasp on a hold to it. So just ask yourself, and if you don't know, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask the Lord to reveal it to you now. So let's pray. Thank oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love and for your diligence, for your patience. I just thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. 
that you show to all of us as your children. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will touch the hearts and the minds of those who are listening right now and gently nudge them in the areas where you are saying, hey, sweetheart, this is the area. Hey, son, this is the area I want us to talk about next. And I pray, Lord, that as you show it to them, Lord, you not only give them the open eyes spiritually, but you give them the strength to say, Lord, whatever it takes for you to remove this fear or this pain out of my heart, I will sit here as if I am on the table and you're giving me heart surgery. I will sit here and not, not fight the process, Lord. So I pray that you give them, first, Lord, the, the realization that you love them. Yeah. And reveal to them, Lord, where you were when they were hurt. Where were you? I pray, Lord, that you will open their eyes to see where you were when they were hurt, Lord, because I know that you were there, even if it felt like you weren't there. So I pray, Lord, right now for these men and these women, Lord, touch their hearts and help them to realize, Lord, it is in going through the process. We can't go around it. We can't go around it as much as we would like. We can't sweep it under the rug. Help them to see that going through the pain is the quickest way to healing and deliverance. So give them the strength, give them the courage, give them the support. It's very helpful, Lord, to go through this with someone else. Give them the support they need to go through this process, Lord. And I remove any doubt or fear or any lies the enemy has told, Lord. Just remove those now in the name of Jesus to give them the clarity they need, Lord, to move forward and reach towards you because you're already there. You're standing there waiting with open arms. So I thank you, Lord, and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Proverbs 23, 7 is for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Think in your heart that uh, God loves you today and you don't have to do another thing to attain his love. I also want to say that as you navigate life today and all the roles you hold, remember that you are light in the darkness, the temple of the living God and cherished by the King. Guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus and think on this scripture too. 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Trillian, I want to thank you for being with us today. And I can't wait to see what you have to share with us in a uh, next episode. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie. It's a pleasure. And those watching to find out more about why you exist and how you can fulfill purpose, even through these uncertain days, call us or go to tln.com slash salvation. Call us for prayer. You know, if you have to leave a voicemail, you will get a call back from our ministry. To watch this program and others, go to TLN programs, go to YouTube and search under the Total Living Network. Thanks for joining us. See you again next week.